Today's video is a little bit of a styling slash skiing inspiration video for those of you out there who are going on a ski holiday very, very soon. You have just returned from a ski trip to Andorra. For those of you that are not aware of the tiny country that is Andorra, it's in between France and Spain. Very, very small country that is basically dedicated towards skiing. And as you may have seen from my stories, if you've been watching on Instagram, I improved massively on the trip there and i must say it's because there was barely anyone there first of all because it was at the beginning of the season it's also a very underrated country so it's not like you know the name brands like france and italy and switzerland etc everything was pretty cheap as well which is amazing obviously and there are also amazing slopes and facilities available in andorra to ski on grand valera is an amazing resort and there are so many other redeeming factors one of which being the fact that andorra is tax free so you could do all the shopping that you want i just wanted to that digression aside talk about the high fashion ski wardrobe that i brought with me that may be of use to some of you out there who are going skiing perhaps for the first First time or don't really know really what to bring and what to expect hopefully this will help and also I like to think that just because you have to have something because it's practical doesn't mean you can't have it be fashion so here I am today bringing you the download of the so that's why I wanted to pull together today's video because it's the perfect marriage of hopefully fashion and functionality and so let's get started with some of the accessories that I brought to kind of style my winter ski wardrobe and I will just talk you know hats and sunnies and those kind of things first helmet and skis and boots and things like that were hired out but for when I was in Apre or if I was out and about in town, I had a few cute items which I want to share. So in terms of the hats, I have a couple of examples here. The higher end one being this Coco Niege hat that I've gotten from a previous collection from Chanel. It was actually on sale when I got it and it's like this camel fur hat and it's the perfect time I thought to wear this hat out given that it's Niege and it's snow in Andorra. So I brought this one out for a day in the city and also just having it in my back pocket just in case I need it and a variety of different hats and also little headbands and things that I did buy. I think these ones are all from ASOS. The hat I think was some sort of market that I got in some European country and also as well in the nature of being warm a nice woolly scarf. This one I didn't wear for skiing because obviously with the nature of skiing, there's a lot of moisture. So I definitely say get all of your kind of reflectives and water repellent, waterproof items, but certainly for out and about in the city, this Chanel scarf that I also got from a Coconage collection, I believe. This is very, very welcomed during the cold weather and it can be wound quite a few times around the neck as well. So it almost can be a little bit like a snood. I would also recommend if you can get hold of snoods and things. Obviously this is just a side piece of advice outside of the kind of high fashion realm, but those are also really practical and it also helps stop you from getting a tan. So I have a few bits of eyewear that I think are really imperative to bring with you on your skiing trip. Obviously not necessarily in these brands, but certainly for the brands that I do have, they are, I guess, market leading in the protection that I provide. And of course, I could not start off a video around skiing and sunglasses without talking about Oakley's sunglasses. So obviously, as you will probably know, but for those that don't, they are, I would say the leading sports sunglass provider out there. And that's because they have patented technology, prism technology, at least for this pair that I'm about to show you, which helps reflect light such that you can see in you know, harsher conditions, different lenses for different purposes. And honestly, the detail that you can see through sunglasses make it so much easier, clearer to see where you're skiing and to avoid obstacles as well as pick up just detail. Generally, it's really good. And 
as you can tell, not only are they functional, but they look damn cool. You can also people watch them because you cannot see my eyes. It's actually like a rose tinted lens. I think these are the rose prism lens. And this picks out a lot of detail in snow and also roads as well. There's different levels that you can buy. There's great infographics on Oakley's website so that you can pick the right sunglass for you. But these are incredible. They are very, very functional. They stay on your face so you can shake them as furiously as you want. And I loved that they had also the white frame as well because it's just very stylish and blends in with the snow color, but also, you know, I have a lot of black sunglasses, so something a little bit different. And I know you don't have to get Oakley's, some people will find those expensive, but if you are in the market for good eyewear, regardless of if it's sunglasses or more goggles, I'm about to show you a pair here that's a little bit more inexpensive, and this is from Block. This pair was actually kindly bought for me by my boyfriend on the trip there, the duty-free counter. Pretty similar quality, I would say, to Oakley's, a little bit cheaper, but honestly, it does the job. I would say these are imperative for any level of skier that you are, especially if it is windy conditions, low visibility, you want these on your head and you don't want to fly around where there's obviously a risk for the Oakley's that I had shown you. These, I think, are super, super cool. They're like a shield, aren't they? I feel very, very... What's that X-Man called? Is he called Cyclops? Can people watch these? <laughs> and they look very, very cool. They're very reflective and mirrored, but on the inside you get perfect, perfect vision, adjustable back strap. I will just move on to another pair of sunglasses that I do have from a brand that I think some of you might find quite interesting as a choice for ski wear, but as you all know, a lot of luxury brands will venture into ski wear. I mean, even Chanel, like I showed you earlier, they have their own range of ski. And, and Fendi, the brand of sunglasses I'm gonna show you, is by no means an exception. And this pair is, again, very similar to the Oakleys in that the frame snaps open and shut. It's a pair of aviators, they're blacked out. You can see the monogram FFs on here. So in high sunlight, and very low visibility. These will be great. It will bring the colors down so you can actually see a lot clearer. And actually these are great also in, you know, hotter climates anyway, outside of skiing. So I think these are awesome and they look really bloody cool as well, if I do say so myself. The only annoying thing is that they have these nose bridges here. So it's not the most fun thing because nose bridges can fall off, especially while skiing, but certainly for apre, you cannot go wrong. And then just to finish up on the accessories front, I will just quickly mention a bag that I brought with me that I found pretty helpful. And I would also not necessarily recommend, but I think is a very practical bag given the fact that it is luxury. And it is this MCM stock backpack in the small size, I believe. Now I know for a lot of people that will want to bring very waterproof, you know, rugged bags. And I would recommend that. But for, as you know, someone like me who enjoys a little bit of fashion and function, I wanted to use a bag in my collection that already existed that honestly, I haven't really reached for in a while. It is a very rugged and fuss-free bag. You can see even while I'm scratching it, there are no marks. It's very pebbled leather. It's very hard wearing. I've had great experiences of it. Took this out and actually, despite the many falls that I had at the beginning anyway of the trip, it has survived wonderfully. And you know, the snow is by no means a forgiving substance when it comes to leather. So I would not necessarily recommend, you know, start bringing your Chanel bags and stuff out like that. But actually in terms of a backpack, this fit all of my essentials and then some, you know, food, bottles of water, you know, wipes, sunglasses, extra layers and whatnot. Well, and it was also perfect as a double up for going out into the town center. And also I could nest other bags inside this one, you know, just, just in case you wanna bring other bags for, you know, dinners and whatnot, this kind of style is a really good option. Now I'm gonna move on to some clothing items. I have quite a few with me that I've either brought or would recommend to bring in terms of a similar style. I'm not gonna mention the obvious things like the cellar pets or the thermals, base layers, you know, merino wool socks, those kind of things I would expect that you would bring anyway. And a lot of the things that I got, they're obviously lower tier because I'm not gonna spend crazy amounts of money on things like base layers and gloves and stuff like that when 
you know, realistically, they will get trashed and they will go into the snow. Those I majority got from Mountain Warehouse and, you know, a few things on Amazon as and when I needed it. There's, I think, the technology called Rico, which helps reflect, I think, sunlight on certain items so that people can find you if in case, touch wood, that you are in a position where you fall. But there are two items that I will show you first, which I did get a little bit specific to the occasion and I really, really rate this brand and I will most likely be purchasing from them or similar in the future. And I actually bought two skiing jumpsuits. They are incredible and they are very, very versatile, very functional and very practical. And also for the price I paid for them, rather inexpensive, I believe, or worth the money. And um, they are in these little bags. And I think these are the actual bags that they came in, by the way. I bought both of these from the same brand on Etsy. They are called Upwear and Suits, and they are based, I believe, in Kiev, in Ukraine, which is crazy, right? I'm getting like a slice of history sent to me through the post. I think they took about three, two, three weeks to come in, so just bear that in mind if you're making an order, but they have all the TNCs on their Etsy page. So both of these, I believe, I got in a size M, and they fit really well. And Bob's your uncle, you get them in the post three weeks later, so obviously if you're in a bit of a panic you won't be able to get these in time so sorry about that but i believe if you're based in the us they may deliver a little bit quicker than to the rest of the world so this jumpsuit is the one that i saw first actually on etsy and i just fell in love with the design and from that point i bought the next one and as you can tell it is a beautiful i'm gonna regret taking these out because it's so annoying to get back in but worth it to show you guys the beautiful jumpsuit that is this lovely black and white gingham dog or dog tooth print jumpsuit now this whole thing is not going to fit on camera so i will just insert cutaways or you know pictures of me wearing it i think this looks so high fashion i think brands like holland and cooper for example make jumpsuits like this in fact i believe they may even make an identical dog tooth print at least in the jacket anyway i've seen and those will be like six or seven hundred pounds and even brands like goldberg and i think perfect moment will have similar jumpsuits they're on my list but i'll only buy them when they're on sale because i think that's a little bit too much money to spend each one i think maybe just like under 200 pounds including all the taxes duties and whatnot delivery and so I thought that was reasonable. And this is a very, very functional piece of clothing because obviously you've got things like the hood, you've got a belt to cinch you in and also make you tons of zip pockets. You've got zip pockets for your ski pass as well, if I'm not mistaken. Is it on this one? Oh, it's on the other one. On the other one, they have zips for ski pass, but they've also got, I put my ski pass in these pockets and they were fine. They've also got internal pockets as well which is a godsend so you've got really big ones on the inside and you've got pockets on the sides as well where the trousers are and you've also got zips at the end of the trouser legs so that you can get it over your ski boot and i just think the little attention to detail is incredible i love how it's kind of like waist shaping or just generally slimming i think because you know salad pets i think they're quite loose and baggy and i'm not really a fan of that loose look if and it's also insulated i believe it's insulated for temperatures to like minus 10 degrees celsius i think i'm not too sure and i've gotten so many compliments on my jumpsuits to date that i honestly also think that they are just great to look at and do cool skiing tricks in them and to follow up from that i will show you the other jumpsuit the only other jumpsuit that i got from upwear and suits and this one by far gets the most compliments and looks the coolest in my opinion and you'll see why in just a second i've I pulled this out because it is none other than this very cool western cowboy fringed jumpsuit and it's in cream i believe or beige it's got no hood this one this time at least i don't believe it has <gasps> wait a second it does have a hood oh my goodness <gasps> i only just realized there is a hidden zip at the back which i honestly when i went skiing did not notice that because it insulated there lined there are pockets absolutely everywhere here there is even a pocket here for your ski pass, so useful. Again, pockets on the inside as well, pockets on the legs. Also has the extendable, expandable leg cuffs, fringing all in the back, belted waist as well, and just a very, very cool bit 
of kit, I think. So those are the two jumpsuits I wanna show you. Again, the site is Upwear and Suits, and I really like spending money on small businesses. So that's one that I would highly recommend. And then just to finish up the clothing section of this video, I will show you some bits of outerwear, so jackets that I think were really helpful. So I'm just gonna show you quickly two pieces of outerwear from Canada Goose, which actually came from my heat boxes, if you've seen that video. Canada Goose jackets are obviously designed for the winter weather and the elements. And I think there is a reason why they're so popular because they do the job perfectly. And they're a little bit more understated than some of the jumpsuits and things that I've shown you earlier. And obviously here you can see I've got a plain navy version here. This one doesn't actually have a hood and it's a little bit thinner. So if it's a little bit warmer on the slopes, then this will be fine. If you're a bit more advanced, then there'll be no problem at all. It does get really warm the more exercise you do, right? When you're up on the slope. So this will be absolutely fine if you've got thermals under it as well. And then this is a white hooded version, similar to the navy in terms of the thickness and everything. So there's an internal zip here, which is popped out it's a huge size though as you can see it goes down all the way the middle there's loops here I think to put like your keys and things like that so very practical there are pockets on the sides here which are zipped which is very helpful obviously you've got your hood there two other jackets that I want to show you are ones that are a little bit more I guess on the higher tier of fashion so this one here is one of the more practical of the two and this is from Holland Cooper now I'm not sure that they make this specific coat anymore this is one that I got kindly gifted to me many years ago actually when the brand probably first started but Certainly now they do have a proper ski range and they have some beautiful, beautiful pieces. But this is essentially a water repellent coat. It's hooded. The hood, I believe, is stuck on. Yeah, the fur rim I've actually removed because it's a little bit flimsy and annoying. And then obviously you've got the Holland Cooper logo and everything. You've got tons and tons of internal and external zipped pockets. And, you know, just something that is very, very warm for the skiing days that can get quite cold and also windy. And obviously being water repellent, any snow droplets, rain or any tumbles that you take are going to be absorbed or rather just roll off this one and not absorbed into your own body for you to catch a cold. So I would highly recommend this and packs relatively flat as well. So you can really shrink it. And I think the Holland Cooper jackets, I do think are quite worth it. So if you can get something quite similar to this for a good price, then that is a great bargain, I think. The final coat that I wanna show you here is a great one. It's honestly, if you remember the Fendi Puffer trend, then this will be very nostalgic to you. And this is a beautiful Fendi velvet heart puffer jacket. It's not reversible, unfortunately, but I know a lot of them are, but certainly for days out as well. And if you're a bit more advanced then jackets like these or the similar reversible Fendi puffers, I think would look really cool. This is very, very big and fluffy. So I would look like a massive marshmallow floating down the slopes. Nonetheless, I do think it looks really, really cute. And it being in black, it goes with obviously everything really exaggerated collars, really exaggerated sleeves with the bows on the end. It's got zip pockets as well. And it's just very, very cute and stylish and warm for the winter weather. So that is all the outerwear that I'm creating a massive pile on the corner that I will have to deal with after this video. And then the last item that I wanna show you is of course a pair of shoes. And, and honestly, what skiing wardrobe would not be complete without a pair of moon boots and this pair of moon boots honestly is not just fashion but definitely function 1000 percent function i cannot imagine my life without them anymore but obviously some people will have controversial things on this one you know they might not like the style of it but i personally think they are awesome they are very functional they've got insulated innards their foam lining i don't want to take out or anything but it's very very warm molds to your foot you've obviously got the indented grip at the bottom so that you can easily tread through snow. They are also water repellent. They just look very, very cute. And obviously they are a very vintage brand and very nostalgic, a beautiful pair of shoes and very, very cute. They come in interesting sizes. I think it's like 
they come in sizes for example i think it's like uk two to six or something really wide bands but they all work and because the inside is lined with this kind of memory foam or something it kind of molds to your foot so you don't feel like your foot is sliding about at all and i've worn these through very thick snow and they've held up wonderfully and they honestly look always brand new when i wear them because they're so white clean and fuss free and they're relatively inexpensive as well and i think you can get discounts but anyways those are the items that i want to show you from my ski wear collection i will leave this video here i hope you found this interesting and helpful if you are going skiing very soon enjoy yourself and be safe if you are going on a very exciting ski holiday coming up and i will catch you in my next video and thanks for watching and i'll catch you in my next video